What's up, everybody? Got to make sure my outfit is right. Looking good for all of you today. My name is Jeremy Hassel. I'll be your host for The Tea. This show is wild. I mean, we got people, people who I look at and go, wow, like this one. Paige, America's Next Hi. Top Model, you are live. How do you feel to be live? I am super excited. I've never done anything live like this before, so I'm excited about it. <laughs> it's her first first time. Woo this is the tea, everyone. Anything can happen. You want to join the conversation, go to tea.tv. You can ask her any question in the world. You can even ask this guy any question you want, even his bank account, credit card, whatever you want. John's got you. What's up, I'm man? I'm an open book. I'm an open Did book. Do you hear that? Do you see what we're doing for you? John, are you scared? Uh, terrified, yes. <laughs> Guys, if you want to talk to John Ross Bauer, you've seen him on Speechless, which he's crushing, and The Big Bang Theory and so many others. All you have to do is go to T.TV. You guys want to speak to this guy. Jason, where are you? <laughs> um, I'm at my mom's in Florida. She's having surgery soon, so I'm, uh, you know, doing family stuff. <laughs> All right. Prayers to mom. Your hair looks amazing. With I want to be there right now. Might have to come hang with you in a minute. You guys want to talk to John about his hair, where he's at? It's the T.TV. Now, for all of you guys, your first time on the show, this is how it goes down. I'll bring up the topics, and all of you bring up your opinions, and we have a great time. Now, a lot of the topics today we're going to get through, but I got to say, I wonder what... Now, Christina's my other half. I wonder what the other half of my brain is thinking for... Ooh, I love the makeup today. Something's a little different. Am I right? Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I had my makeup done today for something, so a little fresher than usual. <laughs> I like, I see you, I see you. And uh, so of all the stories today, what, what's, what's, what's that trip, wet paint? What's everyone talking about online right now? Everyone is talking about Amber Rose. She is in love with Val Tchmarkovsky, and they're getting serious. You know, they've only been dating for four months, but she's already met the family and dropping the L word, so it seems like these two are really heating up. Oof. I'm just glad that uh, my buddy Christina said Val's last name because I would have completely butchered it. You guys want to talk about Amber Rose? We are live for the next few minutes. Also, what we're talking about today, um, my buddy Bethany over here going after her lawyers after her split with Jason Hoppy, saying that they messed it up. Is she right or wrong for going after the lawyers? Do you think she should be going after the lawyers because of this yes, hurricane? Absolutely. Ooh, hurricane saying yeah. Do you agree? Always agree with someone named Hurricane. Trust me. This is the T.TV, people. If you agree or disagree, let's talk about it. We are live, and uh, we have so much going on. We're going to try to talk about uh, my guy. Oh, look at that puppy. Justin Bieber gave up that puppy to one of his backup dancers, and the backup dancer had to do a GoFundMe to get the puppy some surgery, and people are going nuts about it. Are you mad at Justin? Are you happy? Let's talk about it. This is the T.TV, everyone. And, you know, as well, with a live show, we have so many topics. We're going to do our best to get through, and uh, what we really want to know is what you guys think about these topics. So to set it off while we're here, it's so much fun when I can pick where to go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Paige, America's Next Top Model, were you upset or were you happy when you found out that Tyra wasn't hosting and that it was Rita Ora? What went through your mind? You know, I found out actually when I was on the show. So we were filming the show and we were brought to like a helicopter pad on the first episode and out popped out of the helicopter Rita Ora. And so I kind of found out, I mean, I knew that Tyra wasn't coming back because we had heard in the news and the media, obviously, but we didn't know who the host was going to be until we got there. And when Rita popped out, obviously, like a lot of people, I was really super interested and curious as to how she was going to do as the host, because we, I mean, everybody knows her more as like a singer, knows her more as an actress from the Fifty Shades of Grey movies. And so going through the process, we were sort of excited to sort of see what she would do with it. And it ended up being really, really great because she brought sort of this empire to the role. It was really cool. Ooh, well spoken. She's a host as well, people. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> there's, a, there's a brain go there. Check out this clip in case you guys haven't seen it. Paige. Tatiana. Good job. Gia. Yo, Paige, when you're on that chopping block, what the hell goes through your brain? Just please, 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 I don't want to go home. I really don't want to go home <laughs> too early. I want to win this. I mean, I think that when you get into a competition show, you really, like, your eye is on the prize. And so when you're up there, you're just like, please don't send me home. Please, Rita Ora. <laughs> That's so honest. That's what the show's about, people. We are live. This is the tea. I just love this going around. You guys want to talk to these people? All they got to do is Skype in. Look at the power I have. John Ross Bowie. Uh, my man, you see, he already has his tea ready. That means we are going in right now. So let's uh, let's go back to a uh, speechless. Now this show is incredible. 
Um, having a lead, uh, pretty much a kid coming on the show, uh, having with cerebral palsy and, and tackling such a thing and making it a comedy but real, were you scared taking this role on? Um, I was, I'm not going to say scared, but I knew there were a million things that could go wrong in terms of the tone and in terms of making the show a little too treacly and sentimental or on the other side, a little too tasteless and like a live action South Park. And I think walking the line between those two camps is the show's big challenge. And I am so far so good. All right. Now check this out, guys. You haven't seen a clip. Check this out. You. We did it. I'm sorry. It was just a messed up try to announce ourselves to the neighborhood. You're a nice guy, and you, all of you, deserve to know now we're lousy neighbors. Yeah. We're not going to take in our trash bins. We're not going to fix up our house. If we receive your packages, they will become our packages. We had a. <laughs> That's a clip of speeches, you guys. You have to check it out. Him and Minnie Driver and an amazing cast. So much fun. So now I have to come to the point of thinking, where do we go? Who do I give the power to? Jason gets the power. Yes. I have Paige Mobley here. I have John Ross Bowie. Where does Jason want to take us right now? I want to go to John Ross because uh, as an actor, you know, I've watched you in... Oh, God, I can't even think. It's, you're like my friend Beth Grant. You've been in so many things. That, I bet your IMDb list is... I don't know. I know <laughs> it's Beth insane. Grant. Yeah, I, know Beth I started. Grant. Yeah, Beth Grant was in a TV show I started in called Sorted Lives, and I did the play with her, and I've known her for God, like a decade. She's amazing, um, yeah, and I always yeah, look totally to actors that. like. I look at actors like you guys because you know I always I, I work with a lot of young actors. I speak at colleges, and um, I always say you know, being pretty and being like the perfect looking person is kind of a you know. Your shots of working are so little. And when you can fit the mold of so many different people, you kind of get to work forever. I mean, when you're also incredibly talented. And so for me as an actor to talk to you and to be able to tell you, thank you for being an inspiration. I wish I could sound cooler, but that's kind of what I have to say to you is thank you. Well, there's the slightest, slightest implication there that I'm, I'm not pretty. <laughs> well, listen, um, by Hollywood standards, it's a, it's a tough bar. <laughs> but, I don't know where you're going with um, this, man. I would now, fuck you. How about that? Look at that weak chin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the tea. It is live. Any question at any time could come down. Uh, I'm bringing it back, Christina. Christina, where would you like to go? I got Paige. I got John. I got Bass Down on the way today. I got, I got topics. What does Christina want right now? Uh, I have a question for both Paige and John, two separate questions. So for Paige, my question is, what is the biggest misconception about being a model? And for John, I want to know, do you still keep in touch with any of your Big Bang Theory cast members? The hey, biggest John. misconception, I would say the biggest misconception about being a model is that you get a lot of dates. <laughs> and it's, that sounds kind of strange, but I'll preface it in a way that makes sense. A lot of people think that, you know, models are always having people like, like throw themselves at you. But actually, a lot of the time, guys are really intimidated to approach you because of like your height and sort of this like air and stereotype that's like surrounding you. So I think that's probably the biggest misconception. Oh, also in that we don't eat. I eat a lot, like a lot, a lot. I love food. Too. <laughs> you tell them girl, you tell them she eats, she eats. John, you're on the hot seat. What's up, man? Christina, what's your question for John again? My question is, uh, who do you still keep in touch with from the big bang theory? Uh, well, two things. First of all, uh, I felt like I was I, I was harsh on Jason earlier, and that was uh, he said some lovely things, and I was just messing with him. Um, uh, and uh, what he said was really appreciated. Yeah, I keep in touch. We're we're both, you know, well, they're working full time, and, and I am for a change working full time. So I don't see them as much as I uh, would like. But um, I text with uh, with Mayim all the time with Dr. B. Alec, uh, and uh, and she's a she's a dear friend and. Uh, yeah, they're um, they're they're a lovely group of people, and as well they should be. They're all fabulously wealthy, but they're uh, they're just really upbeat, really sweet, sweet people. I love that cast. Now, did you? Get oh, oh, so sorry. I got excited, Christine. I got excited. I'm sorry. Go ahead, girl. I said, did you get a paycheck, a big paycheck, like your co-stars, John? Uh, like Big Bang Theory co-stars? Yeah. <laughs> no. no. Okay. No, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining, but there are several million dollars on screen in that picture you just showed per week. Must be nice. <laughs> and I I'm see fine. Asia smile. I'm fine. Hold though. I'm good. That's stucco. 
That's stucco right back there. I'm not complaining. <laughs> Asia, what's going on? Yes, honey. I have so many questions. I have one for John, and I have one for Paige as well. Um, John, one, you are pretty, so don't let them come for you. You're beautiful. Yes, yes, work. Okay. <laughs> my question to you, though, is as an actor, and I always wanted to know, because me as a journalist, like, my dream job would be, like, interviewing Barack Obama while sitting on Michael B. Jordan's lap. So for you as an actor, do you have, like, a dream role or, like, a dream gig that you one day want to just accomplish, like, whether that's a biopic or doing something that, you know, is so out of the box? Um, uh, I, I frankly love a role where I sat on Michael B. Jordan's lap because he's a hell of an actor. And <laughs> you and me both. You guy. and me I'm both. Not, I'm, I'm, I, you mentioned him, but, but since you mentioned him, I don't think I saw a better performance than him in Creed last year. And I would, I, I, I'd work with him in a heartbeat. Uh, that would be, uh, really fun. I would like to, um, you know, I don't have really specific goals in terms of I've got to play this role or, you know, I'm, I want to do Hamlet before I'm 50. Um, it would be fun to do a Western. Uh, it would be fun to do something uh, that took place in politics because those are uh, I tend to like movies that take place in politics or the Wild West. Uh, you know, things, roles like that would be really interesting. So I'm interested in exploring sort of worlds rather than one particular type of character. Oh, good to know. You see that? We we're talking about it. And John, as you understand, I believe in this thing called the secret, the law of attraction. You want Michael B. Jordan? We're going to make this happen. Ladies and gentlemen, petition right now. We want to see John Ross Bowie uh, as the opponent to Michael B. Jordan in Creed 2. I'll direct. We got this. What do you guys think? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think I'm crazy? There's the T.TV. Well, what's wrong, John? You don't think that works? That doesn't work? No, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, I think I'd like to live through the film. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Now we have Abigail. Um, we have Christine. We have some people talking in right now. But what I want to get to right now is some of these topics. What do we think? What do we think? Now, starting off here, um, Christina brought up a good point with uh, the lovely Miss Amber Rose and with Val putting their love. They're four months together. They met on Dancing with the Stars, and they've been public about it. Now, is this really uh, the smartest thing to go public four months in? So that waited or not, check out this clip really quick. It's amazing. It's it's so good. It's so good. It's been uh, four months now, and it's awesome. And I, you know, I love his family, and it's just that everyone's just so great, and he's great, and um, you know, I just feel like I feel like it's so hard, like being famous and and dating too, because. Not so much for the people, but the fans and like the the people outside looking in, and it's just always like, you know, um, it's like. Well, to see the rest of that go somewhere else. Right now, you're on my time. That was really a, actually an interesting perspective. I didn't expect her to go to that different level of thinking, not just about her, but about her fans' feelings about her. Now, going so early, I see Jason moving around. Wait a second, what's going through your mind, Jason? <laughs> First of all, was that interview in the radio station outside while with her sunglasses on? Second of all, the minute that Amber Rose started bragging about putting her fingers up Kanye West's booty, I changed the channel so you guys can discuss. <laughs> As he's drinking the tea, all of you guys watching on Facebook, guess what? To watch the rest of this show, you want to hang out with Paige, with John Ross Bowie, hang out with me. You have to go to T.TV. Bye, Facebook. Come join the party. We're talking about Amber over here. Hurricane, you're smiling. Why are you smiling? What's up? Yeah, what's his name who was just talking? He was so rude. First of all, Amber deserves to be happy right now. Her and Val are super cute, okay? If she can find someone who can love her despite her past, despite all the rumors and all that good stuff, like, let her be happy. Yes, they're in the honeymoon phase, but let her feel happy and love. She deserves it. Ooh, now she's talking some strong words <laughs> over here. What Paige thing? I see Paige swinging back and forth. What's going on in that brain, woman? I just, I met Amber Rose on Top Model. She's one of the special guests that comes on the show this season. And she wears sunglasses inside all the time. So that's, to set that straight, she's always wearing sunglasses. And I absolutely agree. I love Amber Rose. I think that she not only does so much for her organization, which is about like anti-slut shaming, and the fact that she does have a past, she's such a strong woman. And I love the fact that she's finding love and she's like, fuck the haters. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. 
you said it. You said it. Try not to. Try not to. And my buddy John, thank you for joining us. I always try to get him on, man, on the show. John, we're talking about Amber Rose and Val right now. Is this the, the good move for her? I agree with what the ladies say. I especially like Amber Rose's platform about, um, you know, stopping the slut shaming and all that stuff. I just think the one thing I would advise her to do is everybody doesn't have to know everything about your business. If you're in love with Val and you don't want to get caught into that vortex of negative energy that are the fans and haters. So give them a little bit, but you don't have to give them everything. You see, John, you got to write a book. See, guys, that's why I talk to my man. You got to write a book. We got some facts here. Do you guys agree? Actually, I have a, another question for you guys. <laughs> Is four months too soon to meet the family? Because what Amber says as well, she met the family, they're getting along. Is four months too soon? Christina's on the hot seat. Is it too soon to introduce the family? For me personally, I think it's a little too soon. I like to wait a little bit longer and make sure that this is somebody I want to introduce my family to. Once you introduce your family, like it's hard to go back from that because then they want to know what happened if you broke up and they want to know all the details every time you talk to them about your boyfriend or girlfriend. So I like to slow my roll a little bit. Um, as far as saying I love you, I think that's fine. Like if that's what you feel, but I don't know if you need to put it on Instagram because I think the more you put out about your dating life or your love life, if you break up, then you have to answer to all your fans and all your Instagram followers. Ooh. John, is four months too soon, too quick for these two? What do you think? Let me say this. It's pretty strange that we live in a world where anyone's asking me what I think of Amber Rose's love life. <laughs> One. Uh, two, I, I, I want her to be happy. Uh, she's a beautiful woman. And uh, three, just to kind of piggyback on what Jason said earlier, um, what two consenting adults uh, do with each other's booty is is between them and God. And I I, I want everyone to have a good time. Love is love. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to John Ross Bowie talking about booties. What do you guys do with your booties? Do you agree, disagree? It's the T.TV. Join the conversation. And um, Paige, what do you look for in a man or a woman, a mate? What are some traits you look for? Well, I... Do you have a boyfriend? And one of the things that I love about um, my relationship with him is that he's super supportive of anything that I want to do. I think that that's really great. A non-competitive sort of supportive relationship is super, super important. And I'm, I'm the kind of person where I'm attracted to anyone. I'm, I don't care about height. I don't care about ethnicity or anything like that. I care about personality and having a good sense of humor. And so that's kind of what I look for in a guy. I see you, Paige. The reason I was asking is because um, this guy over here, you might have seen him on a bunch of MTV shows from uh, challenges to the real world or whatnot. And I just thought, just looking at you guys here, I thought I was going to make this work. I was going to become a matchmaker right on this show right here. But, but Jay, I, I tried. I went in. I did. What's up, man? How you feeling today? I'm doing good, brother. I appreciate your help on, the, on trying on that one. I was with <laughs> it. I was with it. I was trying to smooth my way in here, but also, you know, pretty much anything that happened, guys, this is the tea. We are live, you know, from topics and so many other things we can do. Um, one great thing, I'm going to get to the topics, I promise. I see you guys. But while I have John here, I want to know, um, you know, what's your character pretty much with Barry? The speech impediment <laughs> is out of control from the Big Bang Theory. Was that your idea? Did one of the producers ask you to do it? How the heck did you come up with, like, that weird thing you said, how you talk? Um, uh, my neighbor's doing his leaf blower. I apologize. Uh, I'm outside, uh, which is why I'm so well lit. Um, uh, uh, the, the speech impediment came from, uh, me coming into the audition and them suggesting that, uh, if Barry was going to be that confident and that arrogant, he should have some vulnerability. They suggested something very subtle, a very subtle speech impediment. And what I did instead was that ridiculous Elmer Fudd thing. And, um, here we are nine years later. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, I have John Ross here. I'm going to see who did I not let talk to yet? I didn't let, uh, I didn't let Hurricane. Hurricane, do you have any questions for John Ross or Paige? Um, Paige, I have a question for Paige. Okay. How do you, you know, keep your boyfriend secure? Like, you're gorgeous. I'm sure, like, you know, although you said dating is hard for models, but, like, I'm sure he's nervous about all the attention you get. So how do you keep him confident in your relationship? You know, I think that it's important in a relationship that the two people who are involved together are two independent human beings. So they each have their own thing going for them, their own career, their own lives. And when that kind of, when two independent and confident people come together, they're not, 
they're not concerned in a way. So I think that I found a guy that is really confident, has great self-esteem and, you know, knows his worth and knows his value. And that's really important to me. And that's important for me to know as well, know my worth, my value, what I bring to a relationship. So if his worth and his value weren't kind of at the same level as me, then it wouldn't. So it's kind of nice that he also has really good self-worth as well. Oh, nice. she is preaching the gospel over here. Uh, <laughs> 30 seconds. I got John Ross from the Big Bang Theory and Speechless. I got Paige from America's Next Top Model. I got Christina from Wet Paint. What did Tiana want to talk about? What's up? Paige, Paige, tell me, uh, how did you get along with the other supermodels? Were there any attitudes? Did you make any friends? Yes, what what was going on behind the scenes? I did make a lot of friends. Uh, me and the girls, all 14 of us, we still talk every single day. But, you know, going into a house and living with 14 other women, especially with all the drama, I was actually pretty prepared for it. I went to Catholic all-girls school growing up, so I was really used to being around all the female energy. But there was definitely a lot of drama. I mean, all the stuff that you guys have already seen on the show so far. But probably my best friend on the show was Kyle. Kyle is my roommate, and she is the androgynous-looking, super edgy girl. And a lot of people, you know, kind of don't get to see our relationship unfold that much, or at least they haven't thus far. But Kyle is a really intellectual and super cool girl, and she was definitely my best friend on the show. Oh, look at that. You can make friends on reality TV. Who would have thunk? Oh, look at their, their call. I have, I have to wrap all of my callers, actually. All of you guys on, stay on. But to you guys watching, we are live, 3 p.m., Monday through Friday. All you got to do is sip the tea, keep it positive, and hang out with me. That's like a song, right? <laughs> see you guys tomorrow. Bye. At the intersection of social and mass media, TV and the web,